It's time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show live on WBON TV and on radio at WEKY, WKXO, and WIRV. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse and join us here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Also brought to you by Bishop Small Engine Repair and Nuevo Vallarta. And now let's go live to your host, Michael Watkins and Samantha Burford. Good morning, everybody, and welcome into the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Michael Watkins here with you on a Monday night. It's been an interesting Monday so far. We had some pretty weather before, and then around the 1.30-ish, 3 o'clock, maybe somewhere through there, there was a big downpour. It rained for maybe 10 minutes, went away, and the sun's back out here in, in Richmond. And we appreciate you hanging out with us here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. A couple of notes we did want to tell you about. So first, I uh, saw Coach Matuse of the Madison Central Track and field team, and he put on his Facebook page that tonight they are teaming up to raise funds for cross country. It's Madison Central cross country team. Coach Matuse, the coach over there, and uh, you can go eat from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Culver's and uh, come out and uh, help support Madison County or Madison Central cross country. So that's going on right now. Keep that in mind as we go throughout the rest of the evening. If you're trying to find something to go eat. Maybe you're not craving the Wave Over Arthur, one of our great sponsors. Get on over there to Culver's and help support the Madison Central Cross Country team. Folks, we do appreciate you being with us. A big show today. We got Tristan Allen coming on with us to talk about some of her uh, professional wins and her early golf career as she a uh, former Madison Central golfer and has got some big uh, honors bestowed upon her pretty recently as well. We've got Sean Lewis coming over. From the Madison County Youth Football League, we'll talk to Sean here shortly about them getting their season started up, sign-ups, and all that fun stuff that comes with the Madison County Youth Football League. But we do want to start out with some cool things that happened this past weekend. Uh, first, over at EKU, the EKU football team hosted a 7-on-7 mini camp tournament plus a big man challenge, got the alignment involved as well. And there was a ton, a ton of local uh, players from here in Madison County, M Madison Central and Southern were both there as well. Uh, Breathitt County was there. I saw Boyle County, Bryan Station, Frederick Douglass. There was some big – Corbin was there. There were some big names and over 40 – or over 4,500, nearly 5,000 people on campus between all the players and all the coaches and the family members that attended the event. And Coach Wells, last week when he was here with us on the show, talked about them having that event. And it was cool being out there and seeing some of the, uh, the players that we're going to see this year, whether they're facing Madison Central or Southern. And it was very interesting. There was Pikeville was there. It's going to be an opponent for Central this year. And I got to see an early look at maybe some of the quarterback competitions going on with Central. Uh, saw Jaden West make a couple of incredible catches, which we're going to see a lot this year, I feel like, for the Madison Central football team. And uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, what I was told is that Jaden has been getting some scholarship, or not offers, but getting some uh, recruitment because of what he did out there during that seven-on-seven -seven camp. So it was a very good day for everybody, and Walt Wells took to his own personal Twitter account to thank everybody that was involved. Uh, again, this was just great for the university, and we talked about it last week. We've been talking about it for a couple of months now. The momentum that is going along with EKU Sports, we're seeing – Everybody kind of come together and push this move into the A Sun and the momentum that is coming along with that. And now seeing what EKU football, we had uh, Coach Wells on last week. He was talking about, you know, everything that's going on with this transition into the new conference and how it feels like everybody is kind of aligned together. And they're not like, you know, disagreeing with something. Everybody has the same vision for their athletic programs, for the university, and it's paying off. And you can see with this camp, I mean, it was just done so smoothly. Obviously, with it being the first one that they've ever done, there might be some tweaks to it if they do it again next year, which with the success that they had, I don't know why they would not do it again next year and keep this as a tradition for these high school teams to come onto campus and just make this thing a very fun event that these teams look forward to every year right before the season starts. We're, you know, 20-some-odd days away from kickoff. And being out there, you know, I talked to several coaches from some of the teams that I knew, 
and everybody loved it. And you saw on Twitter, I saw several players tweeting out highlights, tweeting a thank you to Coach Wells and EKU for hosting the event. I saw several coaches talking about how awesome of an event it was, how well done and how well put together it was. I saw uh, uh, when I was out there at BSN Sports, which is a place that sells like jerseys and team apparel, they were out there getting their name out. So it just a, it was a very cool event, and kudos to Walt Wells and his staff for what they were able to do out there this past weekend. And I think the most impressive part of the whole thing was is that everybody had fun. I mean, even the teams that – you know, maybe didn't have as much success during the seven-on-seven seven tournament, but they were all having fun as well, just getting out there, a chance to compete. Uh, again, nearly 5,000 people were on campus, and that just creates a buzz not only about the athletic teams, about EKU football, but also about the university as well and the campus beautiful and everything that goes into that. So uh, a tremendous job by Walt Wells, his coaching staff, and everybody that put this event on. Kudos to them for a tremendous job well done. And uh, congratulations. I think it was uh, Frederick Douglass that won the seven-on-seven seven tournament. I'm not sure if there were different uh, levels to it, but I saw Frederick Douglass had a lot of success. And I know uh, Brethick County was out there. They had some success out there. They won a couple of, of their tournament matchups. And uh, uh, they also had the big man challenge, which I think is pretty cool. You go to these seven-on-seven seven tournaments or these scrimmages, and your big men don't really get a chance to get out there and compete. So for them to be able to go out there and to have a thing to do themselves, they could go out there and compete. They could be a part of this thing. I think it made it even more special for some of the big guys who maybe don't get a chance to, to go to these seven-on-seven seven events and, and take part. So congratulations to Coach Walt Wells, and I believe this is going to be the first year – a, and make this thing a yearly tradition for all the high school teams. And who knows, it may get even bigger next year. And I, I think that what they did was pretty impressive. Uh, other EKU football news. So on Twitter, uh, at 6.55 p.m. Saturday evening, and uh, Coach Wells talked about the transfer portal, how it's, infect, or how it's affected, I guess infected too with the way all these players have been moving around but how it has affected everybody, not only EKU football, but several teams uh, around the state and around the nation. And Alonzo Booth, who has been a, na a name that EKU football fans have really gotten to know over the last few years, he tweeted on Saturday night, I'm not done with football. I will be giving up this year of eligibility to me, family is first, and this is the best decision for me, my family, and my mental health. Anyway, I will be trying to go to school in January. My recruitment will be open, and he put respect my decision. So big news for EKU football. Uh, Coach Wells seemed to know that that might be a possibility with Alonzo, who's not really been taking part in the team activities. And he did just have a baby recently. So, listen, I give kudos to, uh, to Alonzo Booth. Listen. Being a dad, especially a young dad, is hard, and uh, he decided to, uh, for for the moment anyway, give up this year of eligibility. He will have another year left, and uh, he'll be able to to try to find a school that is suitable for him, a good spot for him and his family, and he will be leaving EKU. So some news there for EKU football fans as they get started. I uh, saw they had their opening cookout last night over at Lake Reba. If you follow EKU football on on Twitter, they tweeted out some highlights of that. And it uh, looked pretty cool. looked like it was a pretty cool event. So uh, go on Twitter, look up EKU football, and you'll see all the uh, highlights from the, uh, the cookout. Played some cornhole. There were some guys in kayaks. Seemed like a pretty fun event there as EKU football gets their th season started. Uh, workouts began today. The coaches and everybody seemed like they were ready when we talked to Coach Wells last week. And, again, we're going to have him back on the show uh, in about maybe three or four weeks of, Try to get him back on before that first game of the year when they go on the road to Western Carolina. It's a big show here tonight at Jack Burford Chevrolet. Michael Watkins here with you, folks. We'll take our first commercial break. When we come back, lots more to get to on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Hey, why aren't you watching these 30-second walk-arounds?
in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cub Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse in Richmond. Whether you're an EKU fan or you're a part of the Big Blue Nation, Campus Warehouse has something for you. Stop by and see their new line of old row t-shirts because, guys, we know Saturdays are for the boys. Plus, they have the cutest seasonal tees for the ladies. And Campus Warehouse now carries the new line of tees for the kiddos as well. Visit CampusWarehouseRichmond.com or stop by their location in the Richmond Center next to Buffalo Wild Wings. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606 660 Six six two nine nine zero. Here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, Michael Watkins here with you on a Monday night. We're talking some youth football. Now we've talked about EKU. Now we're going to go a little bit of the younger folks and talk with Sean Lewis here. And, and Sean, the Madison County Youth Football League, formerly the Richmond Youth Football League, is an affiliate program of the Richmond Parks and Recreation. You serve Richmond, Berea, and all communities of Madison County. All boys and girls ages 5 to 11 are welcome to participate, subject to a physical, of course. And you all play your games at Kiwanis Field. Field at Lake Creek, and in years past, you've had your championships over at Madison Central. It seems like that's pretty cool for the kids get a chance to go play up on the high school field. Yeah, absolutely. Love getting out on that turf, kind of oh, yeah. stage. It's it's really fun to see kind of how the players take to that. You know, it, it seems like and, and you and I've worked together for several years now, and I know you stay busy. You got the, the six month old little boy now. So, first of all, before we get into the league, what's it like being a, a young dad, man? I mean, it's 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 fun, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's a it's a big time. Um, you know, trying to balance that time is the biggest thing, but uh, that's kind of why I'm getting back in the league because I took a break because we're starting a family. Yeah. And uh, if he wants to play football later on, I kind of want to help with the league and get it going where we where we were and uh, keep moving forward. So. Well, let's talk about the league. You know, what have you seen has been you know some of the changes that maybe have taken place since you were with them before, and, and now you're making your way back in. Has there been you know positive things that have happened uh, since you since you went away? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. They they did some um, travel ball. They got a little bit more competitive yep. with that. So that what was, was it, cool the, to see. The uh, devil, the, the red, red devils. devils. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna take a break from that this year. We're gonna get back, just kind of focus on the league. Um, COVID kind of took a little hit with that and the travel and everything. So, oh yeah. So we want to make sure that we're we're focusing on the league. We look to hopefully try to get that back. Um, we might do something at the end of the year, but right now we're going to focus on the league and just playing here in Richmond and uh, moving forward with that. When you when you look at this league, it, it's great for the kids to learn the game of football. It's just like whether they're playing pee wee baseball or, or or you know young kids basketball, upward basketball around here locally. This is a good way to learn the game of football, and it's a lot of guys that have played football. I know, I know Tony Rose has been you know a coach in the past, and there's several guys that played whether at EKU or somewhere else that know the game, and it's a good way to learn the game for a young kid. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of our coaches, um, we we have most of our head coaches have definitely played you know some type of football. I think the main thing that we do with all our coaches though is we make them go through like this heads up. Um, safety certification okay yeah so that's a big thing that a lot of people worry about and uh all our coaches go through that heads up so even our assistant coaches that might just be out there to you know kind of cheer the kids on or yeah. hold the pad or whatever they all go through that so one of our big things that we want to focus on is safety and and that heads up 
is just so important. They just get that knowledge that really helps us become successful. How many divisions, if you will, do you guys have age groups? Yep, so we have three, which can be five, six, and seven for flag. Um, we have our junior tackle, which is eight and nine. And then we have our senior tackle, which actually is uh, 10, 11. Okay. So, so is there any difference between a junior and senior tackle or just the, the, uh, the age groups? Just the age groups. Um, you know, we, we have a couple little rules, um, like a, a nose tackle isn't allowed in junior. Okay. You know, because we want to start really learning that snap. Yeah. Um, where in senior, we want to try to start getting them ready for that um, going into middle school. So we got to get introduce the nose tackle and things. So. Now you guys are having sign ups right now and yep. till the, the August the fifth, right? And yep. so kind of give us an update on on where they can go to sign up and how they can get involved. So um, mcyf mcyfl dot net, um, probably the best place. You can always go there. It's up and running. You can use PayPal, credit card, anything there to make your payment. Uh, go through and we'll get it um, almost instantly. Uh, it comes to our email. Um, we try to get out in the community. Um, Still, you know, we're still trying to get back to normal. Yeah. Um, but a good event that we'll be at tomorrow, if the weather works with us, is going to be the Tasty Tuesday down there at uh, Mc, is it Irving McDowell. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we'll be there, just a little booth. Okay. So you can come by and get signed up with your kids tomorrow at a Tasty Tuesday. Get some food. Yeah, yeah there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. and there are food there. trucks. And that's yeah. a good event. I know I've been there several times. And it seems like, you know, with you guys – it's all about getting folks involved, whether it, you know, you always need coaches, you always need people to volunteer their time. And, you know, I think whenever you look back, you're doing this for a good cause. You're helping the kids learn the game of football. Yep, yep, absolutely. What's been crazy this year is we've actually never before had six teams in flag. And it's like all of a sudden this huge wave of okay. the young kids coming out. We're still trying to get those numbers for the junior and senior, but um, – Right now, we are overwhelmed with flag, and we love it because that's our future. Yeah. We want to keep just moving forward, you know. Do, do you have a certain number of, of players or teams that you want to have, or does it just depend on number of coaches that you have? Ideally, we're going to want four in any division. That lets you play two games through the season. That kind of fits our structure. But if any kid wants to come out and play, you know, we're always going to add that additional team, and we'll figure out the logistics of everything later. Um, because the main goal is to teach these kids the yeah. fundamentals of football, and whatever that looks like, we'll we'll figure it out. Talk about some of the other folks that you know people might know that are involved with the MCYF. I know Randy O'Neill's you know involved yeah. with the board. And Randy Randy's with the board. He's he's always been a great help, and uh, he really helps us reach out to people in the community. Um, Walt Wells is yeah. you know just recently. Um, getting into EKU and he's helped us out um we have Patrick Garrett he's a firefighter here he's uh the acting president right now okay um we have just multiple people um the coaches seems like if you've coached like little league or baseball or something you're coaching kind of multiple sports oh so yeah everybody gets out there and it's it's crazy for me because you know I don't have a kid in the league so I start seeing all these connections, and it's, yeah. it's crazy to me. Oh, this team I played over here, and then they're competing against each other. It's just fun to watch, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's – it's obviously – listen, when, especially right now, I feel like kids need – to get back into the normalcy of life. And, you know, I, I know, I've seen today some of the restrictions that Bashir, or I guess they weren't restrictions, they were ideas of ways to stay safe. We've seen the new variant, the new COVID numbers that keep going up. But and, and kids are the ones that I think took the you know, a really big hit last year by losing all the fun stuff that they're used to doing, whether it's going to a fair that's in town right now or, you know, going out and hanging out with your friends. That was all kind of frowned upon over a year ago from, from all the COVID stuff. Uh, but I feel like this is a great way, you know, whether your kids are in school or, in, or whatever age group they are, to make different friends, to make new friends. And you learn how to be a teammate. You learn how to, to play a new sport. And you just become, you know, a little bit more out there, out, out in the open a little bit with, with your kids. And I think that's a good thing. The parents can become friends as well. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh, that's one of my favorite things I did when I coached uh, a team. Uh, First day, I'd say, okay, what schools do you go to? You yeah. know, and everybody would raise, and we'd separate, and everybody would kind of get with somebody that's at a different school. And it's cool to see those uh, friendships, because if you don't do that, they normally try to cluster up. Yeah, and who they know. So, yeah, it, it's good to get them out and to meet different people in the community. Yeah, and I think kids, when they get out of their comfort zone, they kind of flourish a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they might be a little bit shy, but the more they do that, the more – I think the better it is for them, obviously. Yes, yes, I agree. So, you know, what what is uh, some of the, you know, if you want to be a coach or if you want to be a volunteer, where do they get that information? Is it all on your own website? Yeah, um, Facebook is probably the best way, like, as far as social media. 
Um, my number's out there. Um, you guys can call me. Um, but mcyfl.net is going to have that. Uh, it's going to have the coaching application and everything that you can go to do that. And do you know how many coaches you need for this year, or are you already got so, everything lined out? So we were expecting the four, so we had the four in flag. I know our junior is pretty full unless we exceed those numbers. Senior, we're going to need some coaches more than likely. Um, but we're always taking assistance, and um, we'll, we'll work with the coaches and say, hey, you know, first-year coach, we try to bring you in as a, an assistant, um, kind of see, kind of help you, so that we're giving these kids the best opportunity with a coach that's not only familiar with football, but familiar with our league, yeah. Because it's not the NFL rules. I think that's uh, one thing we gotta you know, remember. <laughs> so, well, when whenever you you know you talked about Coach Wells kind of getting involved, do you have relationships now with you know, with Coach Holcomb? They, it seemed like it's kind of been of a, a little bit of a rotating door with coaches here in Madison County and the football side. You know, John Clark's been at Southern for forever, but now Frank Parks at Berea. Holcomb is here at Madison Central, and you know I know Holcomb and, and I know P uh, Clark as well. They both really care about the the feeder programs, if you will, and, and how important they are. Have you spoken to any of those coaches? I haven't personally. The league has. Like I said, I'm just kind of getting back involved. Um, we um, are looking to try to um, incorporate doing some stuff at the high schools just so, like you said, when they go out on that game field in Central oh, yeah. for Super Bowl, you just see them light up. So, of course, we can't play every game on a turf field uh, in a big high school uh, place, but um, – we're trying to get incorporated, and I know uh, Holcomb reached out and is just like, hey, I need, I need to sit down with you guys. So we're going to try to sit down and do yeah. that. I know we're both busy, so it just takes some time. But, yeah, we're – Yeah, up in Breathitt County, I think it's called the Lumberjacks. It's a big deal up there. They're kind of like the Eastern Kentucky version of the Red Devils, yep. if you will. They're a small little team like that. And one thing that you all do, so after you get your kids signed up, you're having like a skills camp, kind of like an evaluation, not really to evaluate the kids, but just kind of figure out, you know, you don't want – you know, if you've got 10 really good players, you don't want 10 really good players on one team. You want to try to make it fair for everybody where everybody has fun in the league. Yes, absolutely. We definitely try. We do um, a draft. Um, for football, you know, you got kind of positional players. Yep. Um, you know, you're going to have a lineman. You're going to have the speedy kid. You're going to have, uh, you know, a kid with good footwork. you got all this different stuff that you're looking at. So we try to let our coaches um, know what they're looking for, you know, on that. And so everybody's going to make a team. But, yeah, we go out there. They come out. They work out. It's fun. They feel like they're going to the NFL combine, you know, and then the coaches are going through that. But, yeah, everybody makes a team. Um, we actually have a camp to get ready for that one, and that's going to be on the second and the third. Okay. And I believe the times are six to eight. Um, and then we have this uh, seventh, if I'm not, yeah, on August 7th. Um, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., we're going to have some ex-college uh, uh, athletes out there actually running the drills, and that's okay. more of that kind of the valuation. Let the coaches step back and just say, hey, man, yeah, look at that good footwork. Yeah. Or, oh, man, that, that kid can block that pad, you know. And that way the teams are just even. You know, you don't have a team full of linemen. Yeah. Or you don't have a team just full of skill players. Um, so it's really important there. And then um, – those are the big things. We have a uh, it's a uh, Ryan Tell Ryan Timmons, Melvin Lewis, and Chris Lewis um, that all played in college, um, and then every one of them um, went through like you know the NFL the uh, process, the, yeah. the whole process there. So it's just cool to see them work with the kids, um, and we we want anybody to come out to that. So you're on the fence. You're like ah, I, I don't know if we're ready. Come out to that. We're not gonna hold you like you got to sign up. But yeah. That gives you a good opportunity to let your, your kid be out there see what you feel like, and then at the end of the camp, you want to sign up, sign up with us. If not, you know, just say, okay, maybe next year. Yeah, it's, it's just really fun. That sounds like a good event just for folks to come out and see what the league is all about. You know, yeah. you guys are out there. You want this league to flourish, and, you know, I hear all of the time, well, there's nothing for kids to do. Well, folks, this is something for kids to do. You know, this is something they can get out and be a part of and make new friends and learn the game of football. I think that's the important aspect of it, and you guys really want this to be a fun thing. Absolutely. You know, w w one thing that I think whenever you look at, at here in Madison County is we have a lot of really cool parks and really cool places for the kids to go and have fun. What have you seen in being a part of this league that makes it special? So Madison County has just been great as overall, just with all the parks and everything. It gives us uh, plenty of places to practice. Yep. And uh, we try to rotate the teams through that. We kind of have where the senior teams practice and all that. And... Um, it's just the Parks and Rec, is uh, they're actually helping us out with our football field. And when you get out there, I think it's just that sense of community. Yeah. I, that's what I love about Richmond. It's a pretty big town. It you is. Know, with the, it all keeps the going, too. So, yeah, it just keeps <laughs> going. But 
when you get out there and it's game day, there, there's just that real sense of community out there. Um, and that just always makes me happy, you know. And, What's your favorite part about being involved in this? My favorite part is um, we were kind of talking about it. You have those kids that are um, shy yeah. or nervous when they get out there. And then all of a sudden, by the time the season's over, they're over there. They're calling the huddle or they're, <laughs> they're leading the stretch or whatever. And uh, it's cool just to see those kids develop. Um, every kid that I've ever had on my team or on a teams that I've watched, it seems like it really helps them just a little bit of confidence. I'm a football yeah. player, you know. Um, and I, I've made friends. That was fun time, you know. And that's the one thing that just – I don't think there's, you know, anything like that. That's just an awesome thing. Well, you can tell that, you know, and, again, I've, I've worked with you before in the past, but you can tell you really care about the kids and you and you really do a good job of promoting this league. And you talked about the, the camp that you're having. Two of those guys played at Kentucky. That's a big deal, you know, cause kids getting to see some former Kentucky players. That should get them, you know, fired up and, yeah. and ready to go out there. Once again, tell the folks about the Madison County Youth Football League and how they can get involved in it. Um, just – the big thing would be we always um, we run background checks and everything. So if you're wanting to help coach or anything like that, go to our page. There's a volunteer sheet to fill out. If that's if you want to help us get organized, if that's you thinking about wanting to be a board member, if that, you know, any way that you want to help and you're going to be involved with those kids, we're going to run the background check. So that's the first process. That's A, lets us know who you are, your phone number. That way we can make sure you're good to go and we can get you out involved. We are always looking for help because it is all volunteer. Yeah. So, um you know, we all got full-time jobs and everything, and then it's getting the help. So, yeah, that's the main way to get to that is go to the um, mcyfl.net and then reach out to me. The phone number should be on the Facebook page and get on Facebook. There you go. Everybody's got Facebook nowadays, and that's how hey, you're watching us probably. So get on the Madison County Youth Football League Facebook page. you got all their information on there. It's a great way to get involved with a pretty cool, unique uh, uh, event. They're having that camp coming up here, and you get all the information on their Facebook page. You know, a good organization here in Madison County. Sean, anything else before we let you go, my man? No, I don't think. I just wanted to say also with those guys at the camps, we're, we're in talks with a couple more too, and we're hoping that we get some more guys out. Um, we don't know what that looks like, so I don't want to say too much, but yeah. hopefully there's a couple more. And then daily I'm going to be posting that Facebook. If it's a sign-up, I'm going to get when I leave here, probably post about Taste Tuesday. So every day check that page yeah. because that's that's how I'm updating. Hit the like button. That's the yeah, easiest way to like, stay updated yep, with it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, you, you can tell you're an old school. Where did you go to uh, school at? Where would you play football? Southern. Southern? Yep, okay. Yep, so, yeah, you, yep. you've been around Madison County for a while. What are the odds that we can get you and Randy? Like, what was the drill where you, you kind of the the guys bump into you? What's that called? What's, are we uh, Oklahoma? There you go. Yeah, you, you and Randy do Oklahoma drill. I'll get, get folks ah, out there watching that. I don't I know like if Randy that. would say yes to that or not. But, but that's uh, Sean Lewis of the Madison County Youth Football League. Sean, we appreciate you coming over and talking to us about uh, the youth sports here in Madison County. Folks, another commercial break. Lots more to get to. Tristan and Allen will join us when we come back. We're here live on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop's Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcake, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse in Richmond. Whether you're an EKU fan or you're a part of the Big Blue Nation, Campus Warehouse has something for you. Stop by and see their new line of Old Road t-shirts because, guys, we know Saturdays are for the boys. Plus, they have the cutest seasonal tees for the ladies. And Campus Warehouse now carries the new line of tees for the kiddos as well. Visit CampusWarehouseRichmond.com or stop by their location in the Richmond Center next to Buffalo Wild Wings. 
Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606 66 we're back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, live at Jack Burford Chevrolet on the bypass in Richmond. Folks, if you're looking for a new vehicle or a good used vehicle, Jack Burford Chevrolet has tons of them all over the lot. Just bought me a new one here about three weeks ago. I'll take great care of you here at Jack Burford Chevrolet on the bypass in Richmond. Stop by or visit them online at jackburford.com to see all the latest inventory at Jack Burford Chevrolet. We've been talking football a ton. Last week we had Mackenzie Neal on, and we had uh, Maddie Jo Neely on a couple of weeks ago. It's it's women's golf, and, and, and it's it's listen, I'm not very good at golf, and I know Tristan would destroy me. <laughs> we are joined here by Tristan Nallen, and welcome on to the show, Tristan. Appreciate yeah. you coming on with us. Of course. Thanks for having me. You've been very busy this summer. So talk about just some of the tournaments you competed in. We'll get into all those here, but it's been a pretty busy summer for you, right? Yeah, it's been very busy. Uh, my coach and I have actually been calling this the State Open Tour. Um, <laughs> so right after we got done uh, with regionals, I you know, kind of packed up some stuff and visited down here with my swing coach, Jason, and then traveled out to the Colorado Women's Open. Okay. Um, went there by myself, um, got a rental car, went through the whole ordeal. Um, so kind of getting that out of the way fast. Um, and being able to go out there by myself, experience the, the elevation differences, didn't have a cat oh, yeah. either. So um, getting that out of the way, um, I played all right. I think I got tied for 22nd, then went back to campus actually and was able to use our indoor and out outdoor facility. Okay. Then traveled to the Michigan Women's Open, yep. um, was able to pull out a win there. And then Illinois about two days after that. Um, and also was able to grab the win there and then came back home to Kentucky, played in Kentucky Women's Open, and then just got back from Tennessee Women's <laughs> Open. <laughs> so, so it's been very busy, right? So, yes. you, so you had the win, and the first one was late June at the Crystal Mountain Resort. And then you had the win, you said, you know, not too long after that at uh, the Mistwood Golf Club. So you've been to several different golf courses around the, the states. You're not just here in Kentucky. D do you have a favorite course that you like to play at, or do you have one that you've really been impressed with? I will say Mistwood Golf Club, um, that's where the Illinois Women's mm -hmm. Open is held. I've played, I believe, four tournaments there now. Um, I love that course. There's, you can be as creative as you want to out there. There's a lot of uh, risk-reward shots. And so just being able to have that experience, especially going into the, to the Women's Open as a professional, gave yeah. me a little bit of an edge um, and a lot of confidence going in. So that's one I really enjoy. Well, let's talk about that. So being a professional golfer, so what does that really mean? For me, I think it's a big difference just because I've been, you know, part of a team since fourth grade yeah. <laughs> is when I joined the high school team. So now kind of being on my own, you know, I still have my team that I would call. I have my teammates, you know, I have my family, friends, former teammates that I still consider, you know, my family and my team. But traveling on my own, the expenses are, oh, yeah. <laughs> are adding up very quickly. Um, and then also just playing not necessarily for money, but having money come into the equation. Yeah. Um, you know, playing as an amateur, uh, you play for the love of the game, and you don't really expect kind of anything in return other than, you know, the joy of being able to play golf. And so that's something that I've really been trying to focus on because, you know, playing professional golf, I'm not playing because I want to make money. I'm playing it because I love the game. Yeah. And I want to, you know, I want to learn as much as possible, and I want to compete at the highest level. So definitely making sure that I keep that, you know, in the back of my mind, especially as, as I do kind of continue this transition heading into Q school in August. So do, how do, so do you have to pay to enter these tournaments? Is that how it works? Okay. Yeah, so, you know, the entry fees with these state opens aren't too bad, but looking towards Q school, that's that's where it starts adding up pretty quickly because there's three different stages. Okay. Um, so, you know, paying for flights and hotels and food and yeah. rental cars, yeah. It, it all it adds, adds up, up, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you have sponsors that help get you into the tournaments? 
As of right now, I do not. Um, I've had a couple companies reach out, um, and then a, a good friend actually reach out today. Um, so that that meant a lot. But um, you know, I was luckily luckily I was able to pull out those two wins in Michigan yeah. and Illinois, and that those are going directly towards Q School. So very okay. grateful for that. Well, whenever you're in these tournaments, I mean, how many people are you going against? Like you, you got the you, know, you talked about the Illinois Open, the Tennessee Open. How many people are in those tournaments? It varies pretty widely. Colorado Women's Open, I want to say that there were around 80 people. Uh, Michigan was about the same. Illinois was a little bit smaller. I think there was about 55. Kentucky was around the same. And then Tennessee, there were about 90 people there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, sometimes they'll do cuts. Sometimes they won't. just kind of depends on the size of the field. But looking at Q School, there's going to be about 450 Ooh. players. So <laughs> it's going to be a little bit different. So we'll talk, what is that? What is Q School exactly? Yeah, so it's LPGA qualifying school. There's, okay. There's stage one, stage two, and then Q series. So kind of depending on where you finish, what cuts you make, um, you can either get Symmetra Tour status, which is right below LPGA, or you can go ahead all the way and earn your LPGA card. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the big part. That's the that's where you really want to get to. Yes, sir. Okay. So and I'm I was able to go in twenty nineteen before COVID hit and I missed the cup by one. Mm. Um, but it was a good experience, good learning experience, just being able to be out there um in the California heat. It's definitely definitely different. Yeah. Um but kind of just being able to see where I was at in comparison to, you know, the other competitors and people that are playing on tour. Um, because really there are some people with LPGA Tour status that compete in Q School. Okay. Um, so I was able to learn a lot there. Uh, 2020, they actually canceled it, so I wasn't able to go there. But took my fifth year, and I think I matured a lot, um, you know, from 2019 to now. So I think I'm ready this year. What do you think, you know, obviously COVID affected everybody uh, in one way or another. So what do you think was the biggest impact it had on you and, and the game of golf? I think for me it was definitely the mental aspect of things. Um, you know, basically having golf taken away from me, especially my senior year, you know, that's, yeah. that was not how I envisioned closing out my collegiate career. And so for those first couple months, it was really, really hard. I had some bad anxiety. I was like, I don't think, I don't really know if I'm ready to turn professional. Because yeah. at that point, I had kind of felt like I was being forced into turning professional, having not really closed out my career. Um, and so, you know, Gibson Bay closed down. I wasn't really able yeah. to go out there. And that was a full month before they reopened. So I took the time. And, you know, my coach... Coach Sloan at Illinois is really good about, you know, working on the mental aspect of things. So listen to podcasts, watch a bunch of videos, and just realize, you know, I'm playing golf because I love golf. I'm going to do everything yeah. I can. I'm not necessarily focused as much on the results. You know, um, if I can have fun while I'm playing, that's really the end goal. And taking care of what I can control is, you know, what it's going to put me, you know, wherever I deserve and um, I'm going to be happy with that. You can definitely tell you got a good head on your shoulders. And I think that's very important, especially with doing what you're doing. Cause, and, and I think a lot of folks that like to watch, you know, sports on TV don't really get involved with it. You think, well, they're just going out there and playing a game. It, there's a very big mental aspect to this. And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, basketball, football, baseball. Or, you know, something like that doesn't get as much attention like golf or volleyball or soccer. Those things, you have to be mentally prepared to go out there and compete as well as just the physical aspect of it. Absolutely. And that's something that, you know, Illinois did a great job too. Physically, mentally, over the last five years, thankfully, um, that I was able to be there, I've, I've definitely developed a lot physically, mentally, um, socially, everything. You know, I feel like I've developed into the person um, – you know, looking back when I was maybe 13, definitely <laughs> the person that, that I would want to look up to. And that's something that I'm very, very thankful for. Um, and I'm just kind of excited to see the road ahead. Well, what is the biggest difference between, like you said, you started playing golf as a fourth grader. So what has been the biggest difference that you have seen as you've come up and, you know, now you're done with in, in getting ready to start your professional or already started your professional career? I think golf-wise, my, my course management strategy and kind of just my knowledge around the game um, definitely, again, the mental aspect and my perspective on it. In high school, you can kind of get wrapped up in results. And, yeah. you know, definitely the recruiting process, I think, for me, was something that was kind of intimidating. You kind of get wrapped up in that. And then, you know, if you go out and you have a bad round, you kind of view yourself a little bit differently. Maybe your self-worth goes down. Yeah, you lose confidence. Start, yeah. And so, that I mean, everybody struggles with that. And, you know, not, not just golf, with, you know, everyday life. But I think through – being able to, you know, interact with so many well-rounded people at Illinois and meet so many different people, being able to travel across the world, I realized that, 
you know, beyond golf, there's so much more. Yeah. Um, and it's just a game. Um, it's crazy and it's imperfect and it can be extremely ugly sometimes and frustrating, but that's exactly what life is. Yeah. So just kind of going through that process and just truly, truly, you know, being able to go through this whole journey with a whole lot of joy. Well, you were just nominated for the NCAA Woman of the Year Award. So talk about that. It's got to be a pretty cool honor to even be nominated for. Yeah, yeah, very honored for that. Um, Illinois actually reached out. I won the, the Big Ten Medal of Honor. They nominate, oh, wow. um, they omina- they nominate a man and a woman um, from each institution. And so Illinois, they, they nominated me for that. And then so that automatically entered me into the, okay. to the Woman of the Year nomination. But very, very grateful for that. And that's just going to kind of give me the platform to – kind of spread my joy for not only golf, but just kind of the university as a whole. It's going to give me a good platform for Well, that's that. what I was going to say. You know, Illinois is a big school, obviously. So what made you choose that whenever you were going through that process? I think for me, really, it, it came down to Illinois and EKU, if I'm honest. Um, I really liked the appeal of staying home. You know, I'm, I love my family. I like, I love Richmond. And so when I first took my visit up to Illinois, I was definitely intimidated by the by the big campus atmosphere. But when you get up there, it really is a close knit community. And with my dream of wanting to play professional golf, I really felt a strong connection to Coach Sloan. You know, she kind of went through the whole process that I I'm starting now. You know, she played yeah. on LPGA tour, and then also the facilities up there. Um, you know, you're not going to find anything better than, <laughs> than better than that indoor and outdoor facility. Um, but once I got up there, I just felt a connection, and I couldn't ignore it. So it's kind of my second home now. Okay, there you go. So uh, you played golf. You said you graduated in 2016. What are some of the things that you have seen about women's golf since you graduated in 2016 to where it's at now, not only just here but everywhere? I think it's grown tremendously. And I will say here, just being able to witness, like, Madison Central, Yeah, it's a golf school. It is truly a golf school. You've got Elizabeth Everly, yeah, you've got Clara Breath, and you've got – you know, luckily I've been able to interact with the junior clinics too here. Um, and just junior golf as a whole has just completely boomed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was able to actually work, you know, summer camps up on campus in Illinois too. And it's it's really happening everywhere. So seeing these opportunities open up um, for, you know, whether it's you know competing in high school or even college, um, there's just a lot of opportunities. So I'm going to be able to go watch Claire Beth and Elizabeth up at the Girls Junior PGA Championship. Okay, yep. So. When's yeah. that? Is this this is weekend? Right? Starts tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay, yeah. yeah. So that's coming right up. So yep. it, and it and I mean, just following Elizabeth's run to that in that state tournament last year was so much fun, and we were all kind of on the edge of our seats with her. Mm-hmm. And you know, you talked about Madison Central. I mean, this past year was incredible with some of the championships. They were not only winning state titles, they were winning national championships in some of the cheerleading and dance team events. Mm-hmm. You, you talked about your relationship with some of the golfers there, Mackenzie Neal. You and her are extremely close. Talk about your relationship with her, and you both were in the Tennessee Open, where you all. Talk Talking a lot during that tournament? We went down together. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, we traveled together. Um, so I drove. So we had about three and a half hours in the car kind of catching up, um, which was really, really good. And, um, you know, we were hoping that Maddie was going to be able to go, but unfortunately her shoulder. So we're, yeah. we're hoping she feels better. But just kind of going through that, you know, whole revisiting, you know, the 2015 state championship. <laughs> and then just, just kind of talking about our college experience as a whole has been has been awesome. And, you know, just to be able to see her development and, you know, the way that she's matured, it's it's really inspiring. And I'm very, very proud of her. So You said that her dad was your coach, obviously, when you were at Central. So do you still talk to him quite a bit as well? Yes, yes. Just talked to him the other day. So, you know, I know he loves the game. And, you know, he's he's trying to get out there and beat McKenzie. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is hard to do, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> yes, hard to do. it is difficult to do. Well, so you, I saw, you know, we're Facebook friends now. And I saw on your Facebook page, you were so giddy about the support that you have gotten. And mm-hmm. it's, it you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You have to have support to succeed at it. So talk about the support that you've seen from friends and family and colleagues throughout this whole process. Yeah, that's the thing is just kind of going through this and being able to kind of just share my experience and share my thoughts. That's been something that I've been really grateful for. You know, it might not even be necessarily somebody sending me a text like, oh, congratulations. It's just kind of maybe going out to Gibson Bay, um, hopping on a cart, and I see people that I know kind of waving me down, and I'll, I'll stop and I'll chat with them and just kind of share the experiences um, and kind of share my perspective and then just talking talking myself through this whole process you know I was able to play with a good friend um, Tom Shelton who's a really good golfer um, and just kind of learning something new every single day um, whether or not it's it's a super close friend or somebody that I'm just meeting just trying to share as much 
experience and, and learn as much as possible. When, when you come back home, do you, do you take a break from golf? Or, like you said, do you go out to Gibson Bay and, and some of these other courses around here and play? I think at this point, I don't really take any breaks. That's, <laughs> something, that's something that I used to do a lot when I was in high school. Um, I will say that I experienced burnout a little bit yeah. in high school. But now that I'm able to gain this perspective on why I play the game and why I love it so much, it's, I don't want to take a break. I'm addicted to it. Well, when you're good at something, too, you want to, I mean, no matter what it is, if you're good at cooking, you want to cook a lot. If you're good at golf, you want to play golf a lot. And I think we've seen over the years that uh, the golf here in Madison County has really grown, and these courses have just continued to get better. Do you have a favorite course here in Madison County? I mean, I always lean toward Gibson Bay <laughs> just because yeah. it is my home course, and I think it's a good test. Um, you know, you can go out there, you hit a bunch of fairways and greens, you can shoot a really low score, and then as soon as you get out of the fairway, <laughs> it is it is very difficult. So I think it's a good challenge. But, you know, Boone's Trace is also a great course. Yeah. Um, Arlington's great. We've got some great courses in Madison County. So just anywhere anywhere I'm able to play, I'm going to enjoy it. Tell the folks that are watching where they can keep up with your career at. Is there Do you have Facebook and Twitter where they can go and follow you at to keep up to date with all the things you're doing? Yes, I do have Facebook. I have Twitter. I also have Instagram. Um, it's just Tristan Nallen for everything. Um, that is T R I S T Y N. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So a little bit different um, spelling, and then N O W L I N Nallen. I usually get Nolan, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll go by Nolan. It's fine. Um, but be yeah, called um, worse, maybe. Sorry. Been called worse. I've been called worse than Michael I've a lot. Been so. worse, yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we appreciate you coming over with us, folks. Listen, this lady is on to some big things. So follow her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Keep up with her career. Anytime you're in Richmond, want to stop by and talk some golf, we'd love to have you over. Awesome. Thanks for having me today. That is Tristan Nyland. She's just coming off a competition in the Tennessee Open, and she's got some big things coming up. And again, follow her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to keep up with the career. Of Tristan. Our last commercial break, folks, is coming up. We'll be right back here live on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. We have large SUVs. We have the best selling SUV in America. We have great brand new trucks. Come in today because we want to buy your cars, trucks, or SUVs. was born in our mom and dad's barn in Esco County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cub Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Esco Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Support your favorite team with apparel from Campus Warehouse in Richmond. Whether you're an EKU fan or you're a part of the Big Blue Nation, Campus Warehouse has something for you. Stop by and see their new line of old row t-shirts because, guys, we know Saturdays are for the boys. Plus, they have the cutest seasonal tees for the ladies. And Campus Warehouse now carries the new line of tees for the kiddos as well. Visit CampusWarehouseRichmond.com or stop by their location in the Richmond Center next to Buffalo Wild Wings. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best margaritas and fajitas in town. Doesn't a huge 32-ounce ice-cold beer sound great? Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Richmond. Patrick O'Neill has been serving Central and Eastern Kentucky since 1995. When someone is accused of something they didn't do, or when a good person makes a mistake, they need the best representation they can find. And that's Patrick O'Neill. Whether it's criminal defense, social security, disability, personal injury, workers' compensation, or deeds and wills, when you need legal advice, trust the expertise of Patrick O'Neill. He will get you the money you deserve. His office is located in Jackson, but Patrick practices all over Central and Eastern Kentucky. For more information or for a free consultation, call 606-66. We're back here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. Michael Watkins here with you, folks. Appreciate you being with us here 
on WBON TV. And a special thank you to all of our great sponsors. Again, if you're looking for a new or good used vehicle, Jack Burford Chevrolet here on the bypass in Richmond, right across from Walmart, folks. It's got a ton of awesome trucks, SUVs, cars here on the lot for you. Visit jackburford.com or come on by and check out it for yourself on the bypass in Richmond. This one right over here behind me is an Equinox, and you know that's great for the family. If you're looking for something to, to lug the kids around, got uh, some good, really good deals over here at Jack Burford Chevrolet. We're also brought to you by Campus Warehouse over in the Richmond Center. All this excitement about football starting back. We're about a month and a half away from Kentucky and, and EKU getting out there on the field in early September. Uh, you know, high school football is right around the corner. And Campus Warehouse has everything you need to go support your favorite team, whether it's EKU, Kentucky, or uh, maybe you want to get some just some football or some sporty shirts. They've got those. I saw Soccer Mom and different things like that over there at Campus Warehouse. They've also got the, the old row Saturdays are for the boys shirts and, and, and things like that. They've got uh, some cool, you know, I've seen The Office and, and – uh, friends and shirts like that over there so just pretty cool uh apparel over there at campus warehouse and again they are located next to buffalo wild wings over inside the richmond center also brought to you by the law office of patrick o'neill if you need legal advice uh give patrick o'neill a call he is located over in breathitt county but he serves all over central and eastern kentucky 606-666-2990 if it's workers' compensation, criminal defense cases, uh, SSI, Social Security, anything like that, give Patrick a call. He'll answer all your questions for you. We're also brought to you by Nuevo Viarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Great, authentic Mexican food, and they are continuing to grow. They have an, a location coming up very soon over in Berea. Their Richmond location is going to get bigger to help serve everybody that loves Gustavo and the gang over at Nuevo Viarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. And we can't forget about Bishop Small Engine Repair. They are located on North Estill Avenue in Richmond. If you've been cutting the grass, your mower is on the fritz, or maybe it's time for a new mower, take it over to Bishop's on North Estill Avenue in Richmond. They'll take great care of you over there. So the Richmond Heat team, the uh, uh, middle school, or the uh, AAU basketball team competing out of uh, Richmond, uh, they do a pretty good job. They've got uh, some pretty good players as well. And looking at their roster, they've got Brittany and Brooke Campbell, Tiana Long, Natalia Schrader, and Kendall Kleins from Madison Central, along with Abby Gilbert from Jackson County, Cameron Ridrikoff of Franklin County, and Briley Mullins of Rock Castle. And these young ladies had a pretty good run over the weekend. And uh, they ended up bringing home the championship of the Silver Bracket of a tournament down in Orlando. It was the national championship in Orlando from July 23rd to the 25th at the Orange County Convention Center. And there was for 7th through 11th grade girls teams for 2026-2022. So that's where the, the, the layout there. And these ladies had a tremendous turnout. I mean, they beat uh, Lady Nova's. 41-39, then they defeated uh, the Puerto Rico, I want to make sure I get this right, the Puerto Rico national team in the championship game, a little international action, Dennis Campbell, who was the head coach, told me about. And, I mean, these ladies, they played pretty well. In the uh, Zone Platinum, Pennsylvania, they lost in the pool play, 49-47, to and then lost to SMAC Future, 45-24. So they lost both their games in the pool play. And, they told, and Coach said he told them to forget about those games, go have fun the rest of the day at the Disney and the water park, wherever, and they will refocus on the tournament. So the girls did just that. In game one, they defeated Team Elite out of Nashville, Tennessee, 47-36. to In game two, they beat uh, Lady Bradley Bill, and they got revenge from a five-point loss at the Classic Tournament. It was up in Louisville. In Game 3 in the championship, they defeated for the silver bracket uh, the Tennessee Flight 62-50. to And these ladies just continue to play well. And Dennis Campbell, and I've been keeping up with these girls all summer long. They've had uh, a couple of different teams they've been a part of. Uh, Brittany and Brooke Campbell, Schrader, Ridrikoff, who's from Franklin County, who's a really good player. They have done a, a tremendous job of just competing and getting themselves better. I'll tell you what. These names, keep those names in the back of your mind because these young ladies are going to be very, very good when they get older. A lot of these girls, I'm pretty sure all of them, are going to be entering their freshman year of high school. So, again, they are just going to get better 
as they get into uh, their high school careers. A lot of these girls are already you know key pieces on uh, some of the teams we've seen. You know, with with the Campbell girls and Schrader. Tiana Long, all those girls were getting minutes on Madison Central's team last year. The Redrickoff girl was, I think, the sixth or seventh player uh, in, in the rotation for Franklin County, who won the regional championship, went on to, to compete in the state tournament. And we know Brooklyn Miles, who was the big important piece there for Franklin County. But Redrickoff was a, a pretty important piece of that team as well. We are here live on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show, folks. We, if you have a team or you know wh whatever the case is, if you've got a an AAU team or a, a a little league baseball or softball team, whatever the case is, and they have done something that should be noted. And let us know. We'd love to have you and the team come over to the sports show, and we'll find a way to get everybody interviewed and have fun with them and, and let the folks around here know what they are doing. It doesn't matter where they're from. If they are doing something sports-related and it's been a big deal, whether it's winning a, a tournament or whatever the case may be, let us know. We'd love to report on it here on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show. We also want to tell you, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, folks talking about, you know, the, some of the things that are coming up. We're very close to high school football season. In a couple of weeks, Samantha and I are going to have our season previews where we do season previews for all the three uh, teams here in Madison County. Berea under first-year head coach Frank Parks, Madison Central under first-year head coach Mike Holcomb, and Madison Southern, who had that amazing run last year in the tournament before COVID uh, put an end to that. We'll have, uh, we'll have our season preview with Madison Southern, Berea, and Madison Central on the sports show here in a couple of weeks. So it should be a fun show then. Uh, next week, Samantha and I have got some pretty cool guests coming over as well. And if you uh, want to be a part of the show, you know, we try to, to get everybody involved and, and make sure that all the teams are getting coverage. And we're going to try to do a soccer preview this year as well and maybe some tennis previews. So we want to get everybody involved. We appreciate all the folks that uh, let us know what's going on and keep us up to date with everything going on here in Madison County. Folks, we know the COVID-19 numbers are going up. Let's all try to do our part. Continue to social distance and continue to wash your hands. Stay safe. You know, I don't know what your opinions are on wearing a mask or being vaccinated, but let's just everybody try to do our part. We've had a month, maybe a little bit over a month, of some normalcy Let's try to keep that intact here. We especially want to keep it intact as we get ready to go into football season so we can all get out there and support our favorite teams this upcoming year. For our producer, Austin Hanks, I am Michael Watkins, folks. Uh, no Samantha Burford. She'll be back with us next week. We'll be back over at Campus Warehouse next Monday. From all of us, have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time on the Jack Burford Chevrolet Sports Show.